Hello and welcome back to Channel England Football. My name's Gary and this is my England annual 2021 review. I'll be discussing my top three players of the year, my moments of the year, the losers of the year and just the year in general. So without further delay, let's get into this one. So I'm going to start off then with some basic statistics this year. So England's year 2021, funnily enough, our most successful year in 55 years, but I'll come on to that in a second. So it was nicely sandwiched, playing the worst team in the world at the beginning and at the very end. So in total, including the Euros, we played 19 games, scoring 52 goals, 15 victories, 4 draws, no defeats. Yes, it isn't a defeat, that 0-0 against Italy in the final, and only conceding 5 goals against. So yeah, this is England's best year, isn't it? In 55 years, since 66, we got to our first ever European finals. That cannot be underestimated. Our first final, forget the Euros, you know... Our first major final in 55 years. The summer obviously is the highlight, but I've got one particular game in mind that I want to pick out as my highlight or my moment, if you like, of the year. But I'm going to start off with what I think England's top three players are, or the winners of 2021, if you like. So officially, England's top player of 2021 is Calvin Phillips. Now, I'm going to have him at number three on my list. He's completely deserved. I know it's very difficult for me not to have him as number one, because who would have thought, let's be honest, when he picked that squad for the Euros, who would have thought Calvin Phillips would now be the player he is for England? He is almost undroppable. Him and Declan Rice have had a fantastic 2021, established themselves really as England's go-to centre midfielders. Even more so when Southgate recently tried to experiment with a more attacking lineup, uh, which didn't work out very well. We didn't look very attacking at all. We looked quite toothless and quite fragile at the back. So Phillips with Rice have cemented themselves as England's first choice central midfielders. That's a huge, huge step up from where he was at the beginning of 2021. Nobody, if I'd have said that to you at the end of 2020, you would not have believed me. He had a fantastic Euros, particularly if you think about it, going back to that first game at the Euros against Croatia. I think a win is so important in the major finals. And because of Calvin Phillips, he set us on our way. And he could not have done more, could he really? He's, he's had a fantastic year. So that's why he's down as my number three. Now, my second best player of the year, if you like, is going to be very, very controversial because he's very much Marmite, but I don't understand it, particularly in an England shirt. My number two is Jordan Pickford. The reason why, go back to the Euros. What a tournament Jordan Pickford had. Even go into the penalty shootout. He did absolutely everything he could or you could wish for from a keeper in that penalty shootout. He gave us every opportunity possible for us to go and win it. There was also important saves in other matches. He was, I think he was the best goalkeeper at the Euros. And yeah, I just don't understand the criticism. I know for Everton, he's, he's, he is a little bit different, but I still think he's good there. But for England, I think he's hands down the first choice. He has never, very rarely put a foot wrong for England. In fact, he's often been one of our best players. He's just his distribution was great again at the Euros. I just think he's had a he's had another great year in an England shirt. He's had another fantastic year, and that is why Pickford is my number two. So my number one player of the year for England has to go to Raheem Sterling. Now I am not Raheem Sterling's biggest fan. I get frustrated with him. I don't think he's strong enough. I don't think he's ruthless enough uh, when he gets a chance to score. I think he's easily pushed off the ball. I think he goes down too easy sometimes. But nobody can deny that without Sterling at the Euros, England would not have got as far. That alone, because he's basically dragged us towards our first major final in 55 years, he has to be. He has to. I know he's the obvious choice, but he has to be the player of the year. For me, he has to be the player of the year in, 20, in 2021. So yeah, well done Raheem Sterling. So I'm very quickly now, I'm going to go into my losers of the year. I don't I don't want to call it losers, but I couldn't think of another name. But basically, players now who start at the end of 2020 look like they would be certs or, you know, certainly certain starting 11 players, but now have gone backwards a little bit or somebody else has taken their place. So number three on my list is Jordan Henderson. I think the big thing with Henderson is that he came into the Euros, didn't it, unfit. He, he, he didn't, he, um, he hadn't played many games. He was injured leading up to it. That meant Calvin Phillips got his chance. Declan Rice was also obviously a cert then. And Henderson really hasn't been able to budge them out. I know he did get his first goals this year for England, which has been fantastic. The reason why I've got him in my losses is because Prior to 2021, he was almost, let's him with Rice, he was our only 
first choice centre midfielder. I mean, if he wasn't fit, that would be it. He was a certain to start every single game for me uh, prior to this year. No longer the case, you know, he, he didn't play Phillips predominantly played most of the Euro games and yeah Henderson's got I want, it's a bit harsh to call him a loser of the year because he has still had a good year but he's certainly gone backwards in terms of his certainty within the England squad he's got a lot of competition now within that position so he's got a little bit of fighting to do which is remarkable considering how well he plays for England I, I, I'm a big fan of Jordan Henderson I just want to rate, uh, just want to specify that now I think he's a fantastic player but yeah with the rise of one comes the downfall in very very loose terms of another and I think Jordan Henderson has been the one to suffer as a result of Calvin, uh, Calvin Phillips's form. That brings me to my number two. This is a weird one because he didn't play an awful lot of games beforehand but so Jane Sancho obviously his form in Dortmund suggested and a lot of the pre press in Germany and the, and the football fans in Germany were absolutely astounded that we weren't playing more more Sancho in 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 the, Euro, in the Euros. It was So leading up to the Euros Jaden Sancho was obviously this Huge signing for Man United over the summer. Obviously, his form in Germany suggested he should almost be starting. He hadn't. He hasn't been for England. But the problem is, is that when he's had his opportunities this year, he, he hasn't taken them, has he? Really? And he hadn't done really prior to that. He's, he's had, I think, about twelve or thirteen games. Not there's no outstanding performance I can think of, or certainly anything that comes close to his performances for Dortmund. And there's a lot of competition in his place now, you know, with Foden and Grealish coming in, and obviously Saka as well. Yeah, I think Sancho is a is a loser in terms of his England shirt. I think pretty much for his club as well. He's not, not obviously not found anywhere near the form he has for Dortmund for Manchester United. Starting to play a bit better now. Yeah, Sancho's got a... I think he's, he's lost a year. We'd have thought probably in 2021 it was going to be his year, his year to cement in play, his place at Manchester United, his year to cement his starting place with England. And at the minute it just hasn't happened, has it? But I, I, I'm optimistic for the future. I think he's got the talent. He just needs to adapt himself to the English way. But hopefully 2022 is Sancho's year. But for this year, I feel like he's, he's gone backwards a little bit. And this brings me on to what I think is the biggest loser. I hate saying it, I know. But again, the biggest loser of 2021 has to be Marcus Rashford. I hate to say it because off the pitch, obviously, we all know the great work he's been doing. And valuable work has been absolutely fantastic. But on the pitch for club and country, it's just not happening, is it? It's just not happening on a consistent basis. Go back not too long ago, and if Rashford wasn't starting a game, we would all be up in arms. We would not understand it. He was the cert, he was our main man, he was the key threat. If you wanted something to happen, Rashford was the player. We all thought that in, you know, years to come, he would literally be the first name on the team sheet. And now he's, you know, he. He can't. He can't get a game. He, he cannot get a game for England. There's numerous players above him. I would put Saka, Grealish, even Sancho, Foden, Sterling. All these players are above him in within the England squad. And at the minute, he's struggling for form for club as well. I don't. Rashford really has regressed in 2021. I really do think that he, he certainly hasn't improved. You know, he's not got better. He's got a big challenge now to get back into this England squad for the World Cup. He will get, you know, I'm, I'm saying that loosely. He probably will get in the squad. There's a lot of players. There is a lot of players and it looks like only increasing into 2022. So if he doesn't start to find his form, you know, is his position within that 23-man squad or whatever it ends up being now, you know, it changes each week. But whatever it ends up being for that World Cup, is his place at risk? At the minute, you would have to say no. Moving forward, particularly if he has... Another bad year. 2022 is really key for Rashford now. Probably looking at him being removed from that England squad because he's not offering a lot. He's literally coming off the bench to score penalties and obviously he didn't do that in the final. So yeah, Rashford for me is, is my top loser of the year, if you like, within an England shirt. That finally brings me on to my moment of the year. I think, without a doubt, for me, my moment of the year has to be Kane's second goal against Germany to get, make it 2-0. In the last 16 of the Euros, I know it's only the last 16. I'm not picking the quarterfinal or the semi-final or that goal in the final. For me, it was just it was another one of those key moments under Southgate where you felt something is happening. The euphoria, the glee, you could not believe it was happening. England getting a second goal against our arch rivals, knocking a major, major team out of a tournament in 90 minutes. It just hasn't happened in my lifetime. As simple as that, it just has not happened. For it to happen at Wembley as well, um, even a half-packed Wembley, the euphoria, the limbs as you like, it, it was just unbelievable. And yet, I'd have to go some way in 2020, something remarkable would have to happen to top that brilliant i'll be watching that game back 
for the rest of my life. It was a glorious moment. And yeah, that is my moment of 2021. So that's it for this video. What a year it has been for England. Thank you very much to everybody who has supported this channel. If you have a look on my YouTube channel, I actually created this channel a couple of years back, but never uploaded anything. So that just shows you how long I've had an idea of creating a YouTube channel solely for England content, uh, in England content, because it's something I've been wanting for a long, long time that wasn't there. But thank you so much. I cannot believe that within the past seven or eight months, how much this channel has grown. I'm, I'm amazed actually that I've got, as it stands at the minute, 54 subscribers. I am absolutely astounded at that. You know, I'm absolutely over the moon. It's more than I'd ever wished for. I was hoping 10 people would watch each video. I'm getting a little bit more than that each video. Some are doing really well, some not so well, but thank you so much for people who are supporting this channel. I'm absolutely loving it. I wish I could do more videos more often, but no, thank you very much. 2021 will will be a special year for me. It's the year I launched my YouTube channel and it's the year England really come home, didn't it? Almost, almost brought football home as well. So what a, what a year. I wish everybody a happy new year. I hope you had a good Christmas and I will see you in 2022.